All right, it's July 2021 and you're thinking, I want to play a new MMO. Don't worry, fam, I got you. In this video, I'm going to give you the rundown on what is going on in the genre right now. As there are multiple brand new MMOs launching this month, even this week, depending on when you're watching this, as well as alpha and beta tests for some of the most anticipated MMORPGs out there. What they cost, when they come out, what they are, I got it all for you. So sit back, relax, and don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel because I am worth it. Also, leave a like and a comment for the algorithm. And in date order, what we have launching right now is starting with Crowfall. Crowfall is launching today, July 6th, 2021, and this game calls itself a Throne War Simulator. It is the first of the largest scale Kickstarter MMORPG crop to ever launch. Inspired heavily by the old school MMO Shadowbane, Crowfall is a game for the PvP fans out there. More of a sandbox experience than what you're typically used to, and so the PvE is a very limited experience, mostly serving as merely a stepping stone to the more fleshed out idea of PvP content, which includes guild versus guild battles, sieges consisting of large scale warfare to take over actual physical locations in the game, and small scale skirmishes as a more frequent occurrence. That's not to say you can't play if you don't like PvP. One of the main selling points of Crowfall as an experience is that the game runs in a very non-traditional way. To cut a long explanation short, you essentially have campaigns running concurrently where you can choose to join and each campaign will have different rule sets. This means some of the worlds you can enter have PvP enabled all the time with varying rules, going from the most punishing to very light, and on top of that some worlds that have absolutely no PvP at all. They also recently included a Battle Royale mode, referred to as Hunger Dome, where you can have some quick hop-in, hop-out fun, if that's more your pace. The game is launching, as I said, July 6th, and has a box price of around $40 USD, and an optional premium subscription of around $15 USD per month. The optional subscription is extremely lucrative, as they usually are, including 100% increased storage space, unlimited free respects for your character, unlimited free character boosts which usually cost gold, and a decrease in the decay of your usage of mounts and tools, as well as a food buff duration increase. My opinion about Crowfall and the game's viability as a product is admittedly outdated. I haven't played Crowfall since the beta first launched in August of 2020. My opinion is that the game has a very small niche audience, and it at the time lacked the polish to do considerably well. After following the development since the very beginning and playing off and on throughout 2019 and 2020, I couldn't see a world in which they managed to get the game to a good enough state in the last seven or so months, but having said that, maybe they pulled it off. I would suggest Crowfall if you are a PvP fan that can handle a bit of jank and a steep learning curve. If you have a guild or a group of friends to play with or you don't mind joining them and you don't mind taking a stroll off the beaten path of what you would typically find in the MMO genre. It's a unique game and maybe it will be the game for you. However, if you have no interest in PvP at all, I doubt the game will offer enough for you to sink your teeth into for any length of time and it is a distinct weakness of Crowfall as a game. Next up, we have Swords of Legends Online. Forgive the abysmal title of the game, as it's actually quite deceptive. You hear a name like that and you come to expect some absolute shovelware garbage, but it is surprisingly a capable experience. Then you hear the next sentence and you expect even worse. An MMORPG ported directly from China, based on an extremely popular franchise over there and brought over to the West via publishing partner Gameforge. Don't let any of that get to you though, China or Korea and MMORPG in the same sentence usually means nightmare fuel, usually means a pay to win cash shop, crazy rigged RNG enhancement of gear, and always on PvP murder simulator with very little in the way of western MMO structure. But Swords of Legends Online is somewhat of an abnormality in this sense. Launching on July 9th officially, Swords of Legends Online, which we will now refer to as Solo, is a western theme park MMORPG by design, but with that eastern twist. Focusing mostly on the content you've come to expect, a structured questline to level from start to finish, instance dungeons and raids with varying difficulty, including extremely difficult endgame group based content, a holy trinity combat system of tank healer and DPS, instance PvP for small to medium sized groups, with sieges to come into the game at a later date, and a cash shop that is 100% entirely cosmetic, and only additional monetization element being a battle pass, with again, entirely cosmetic rewards. Swords of Legends Online is a game that has a box price starting at $40 US and tiered into three packages, with more cosmetic rewards per tier increase, up to the maximum of 100 USD for the top package, as you will come to expect nowadays from most of these games. It's buy once, play forever, so $40 and you get to experience everything the game has to offer going forward. 
My own take on Solo is that it's a capable game that does what you're used to if you've played pretty much any Holy Trinity Western MMO, but with the additional flair and twist of an Eastern aesthetic and storytelling. It is a complex game that you might struggle to get into due to the sheer amount of systems and things that there are to do, as well as the information it gives you on the screen. The combat is a bit of a hit or miss for many people, although it is playable in action or tab target completely on the fly. You can swap between these, so you might find a style that suits you and it does have a lot of content for a pretty low cost of entry. The game is almost certain to never go pay to win as the game in China is not pay to win at all, even after being launched for three years already. So the Western publishers couldn't even add it in, even if they wanted to, as they don't have the ability to change the game code to add in new items that don't already exist in the original game. So this game might just be a breath of fresh air for you if you like the traditional theme park style, but with more flying on swords and crazy shit like that. Next up is the alpha for Ashes of Creation. This shouldn't need too much of an intro as Ashes of Creation is probably the most hyped MMO out there right now. But on July 9th, the non-disclosure agreement currently shrouding the project in a little bit of secrecy is being lifted. And that means the floodgates are gonna open for testers to stream the game, make YouTube videos and really give you the juice that you've been waiting for and see what the game has to offer in the currently admittedly early state. This is less of a game to play and more of a project to test, a project to look at the foundations of. It isn't for the faint of heart for a multitude of reasons, one of which being it's still likely years away from a real launch, and the other being because the price to play this testing session and all sessions going forward is $500 US, which is obviously absolutely mad. I will not suggest you purchase this as you really have nothing to gain from doing so besides some limited time cosmetics, which could be limited time cosmetics for a game you don't enjoy or don't want to play in the future, even if it does ever release as a game that is considered to be good. But if you are an absolute madman, you can use my link in the video description to make your account before you do buy it, and I'll get a kickback on your purchase. So at least if you do waste your money, you can feel good knowing you gave some of that money to me, which is really nice of you. I do really appreciate that. So I've yet to play Ashes of Creation, but everything I've heard and seen about the game leaves me with more questions than I have answers to. The combat is like Luster for now, but a major focus of the development at the moment. We have not seen enough of the core features of the game working together to see whether or not the game will be a standout. And there have been quite a lot of networking difficulties of late. But one thing is for certain, Ashes of Creation is shooting for the stars in terms of vision for the future. Although depending on who you are and what you enjoy, the stars may be somewhere you don't want to go. As I do have to warn you, Ashes is going to be a niche game due to the hardcore nature of the open world focus game design and likely will not be for the faint of heart who are adverse to loss and used to a more casual theme park experience, something like World of Warcraft. I'm not sure if I'm going to be in the testing phase to cover this as I've not yet been sent a content creator's access code, but regardless, this is one you should mark on your calendar to keep your eyes on and see what they have managed to throw together at this early stage. July 9th is a really big date for Ashes as it will be the first time players can truly show the state of the game to the world, and I'm looking forward to seeing what that looks like. And next up we have the New World Beta, coming on July 20th and running until August 2nd. You can get access to this beta test if you have any pre-purchase of the game, which costs $40 US, and you can get this from either Steam or Amazon's own website. New World will also be launching as a full retail experience on August 31st, so definitely a good idea to get into this upcoming beta to see if it's a game that you will enjoy and that you'd like to play on launch. New World is Amazon Game Studios' blockbuster MMORPG, a rocky development history where the game changed direction in a hard pivot from the original hardcore open world survival sandbox PvP game it once was to the more traditional casual theme park style it is today. It has some standout features like land ownership for guilds in the way of instance 50 versus 50 siege battles, open world PvP and PvE objectives, five player dungeon system called Expeditions, instance battlegrounds, a robust gathering and crafting system with a focus on player driven economy, and a very interesting character customization system to truly tailor your experience. You have 10 weapons to choose from, of which you can choose two. Each weapon has two distinct talent trees. You have stats that you can customize that give you certain bonuses, armor weights, and much more. New World has a bit of something for everyone, whether you're a PvE player, a PvP player, or someone who wishes to focus on economical tasks such as crafting and gathering. Personally, I thoroughly enjoyed New World when I got to play the game back in the summer preview event back in late 2020, and the game has changed drastically since then, with more content added in overall and changes to the gameplay experience such as fully voice acted storylines put in, new combat mechanics, the change to a holy trinity system with tank healer DPS, and so much more. 
the standout of New World is definitely the world, which looks absolutely fantastic and was a pleasure to navigate. And the main selling point is that it's a brand new MMORPG being developed by a massive company in the West, which means hopefully it will be really well supported with new content and not overly monetized, which is yet to be seen as the cash shop has been a point of contention recently. Definitely worth checking out on July 20th. He's not a long time to wait to do so. All right, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed and hopefully one of these games is going to be the one to tickle your pickle. 2021 should be a great year for MMORPGs with a ton of new games launching, a ton of expansions launching. And I will leave a link in the video description to a video showcasing everything to look forward to in the genre this year. Appreciate you all. Stay safe out there. We out. Peace.